Today we're working on uh, our first version of Mad Libs, which is going to be a text-based version of the program. Uh, I'm going to open up NetBeans and we can get started. Creating a new project, just a standard Java application. So this will be my first version of Mad Libs. Now, what's interesting about this is you can throw all of this straight into the main method. But I'm trying to think there might be a better way to do this. Yeah, let's just make it straightforward. So everything's just going to go in the main method. We don't need any instance variables or data types. Um, uh, first up, we would look on our Madlib sheet, and we want to create a variable for each blank that we have in our Mad Libs form. So mine's on Ewoks. My first part of speech is an adjective. So I might say uh, string adjective one, maybe. My next part of speech is a plural noun. So I might put plural noun one. I'm, all I'm doing is just going through and adding each of the different parts of speech. So I'm going to just do those two, but you'll need to do the rest on the rest of the ones on your farm. So here are the variables for the parts of speech. So again, this is where we're going to put the user's input when uh, we ask them about the part of speech. There might be multiple adjectives, so that's why I put a little number at the end. Okay, so that's the first part. Next, we need to ask the user for this input. The question is, how are we going to get this data from the user? We have a few options. This first option is just use the command line. We found that, that we're going to use the scanner class. Let's create a scanner object. Before we do that, we need to uh, create an input stream. So, say, and here now we can put in a scanner. So if you remember system.in, uh, basically is uh, what uh, the user is going to type into to give you their information. And in this case, it's just going to be the output window. It's kind of weird to get input from the output window, but your output window is here on the bottom. That's equivalent to the command line. So we go and get that input stream, and we wire it up to a scanner. The scanner allows you to read in Instead of just a byte at a time, like an input stream, you can read it in a word at a time. So that's why we're using the scanner here. So now we want to tell the user to enter in their first uh, part of speech. So you would say uh, system dot out dot print. And in this case, we want to prompt them for our first parts of speech. So I would say, please enter an adjective. And then maybe a colon and a space. So here we prompted the user, hey, can you enter an adjective? And then what we need to do next is get that input back from the user. They're going to type something in and hit enter. And we need to store that into our adjective. So we would say uh, adjective, because that's where we want to store it. One equals my scanner dot We're looking for the next string, but there isn't one there. We just want to say next. 
see what it says about next. Finds and returns the complete token for this uh, scanner. A complete token is preceded and followed by input that matches the delimiter pattern. This method may block while waiting for an item to scan, even if the previous invocation of scanner has next has found true. Hmm. So what it's trying to tell us is that um, it's only going to grab one word and not a, a series of words. So if you have, if the user types in a word and then a space and then another word, it's going to ignore that second word, probably. Okay. So here we would just say uh, next. Evidently that gets the next thing. Notice how next returns a string and that's what we want. So we just say next. That gets the next word from the command line. And then we repeat the process over again for the next part of speech. My next part of speech is a plural noun, so we would say that. Okay. But yours might be different. Yeah. So if I want to enter more than one word, how do we do that? You can't. So you're kind of limited to, to forcing oh. to do one word. If you want to read the whole thing, you can read a whole line, maybe? That would work. So instead of next, you would say, hmm. I think there's next line. Yeah. And that will read everything to the point where they hit enter. Okay? So if they have multiple words, they hit enter. And then you could stuff that into the string. Yeah, I think that would work. So maybe next line is a better idea. So instead of next, we'll do next line. So we'll just get everything until they hit the enter key. Even if they have multiple words with lots of spaces in between. That's a good point. So something that looks like that. But again, use your parts of speech, not mine. So here's our input part. Now for the next part, we're going to build up a story. I think we want to use this class, String Builder. Yeah, it knows what that is. That's interesting. Uh, Now what a string builder is, is it's a, a special class for when you're going to be building up a string, like adding more and more to it as you go along. And then once you have the whole story put together, then you can go and get that story by saying to string and returns everything that you put in. So in the book they have us using strings, but I'd rather use a string builder. So there's our string builder. And this is uh, where we're going to be uh, depending on the things from our story. Let's see what it says about String Builder. Okay, so here's a String Builder. And it says, a mutable sequence of characters. This class provides an API compatible with String Buffer. It has no guarantee of synchronization. This class is designed for use as a drop-in replacement of String Buffer. Principal operations on String Builder are append and insert methods. So we're going to be appending. We're just going to add stuff to the end. It says it's mutable. Mutable means it's changeable. Strings aren't changeable, which seems kind of strange. Uh, but String Builders are not. So it's a little bit more efficient way of building up strings. Lots of different versions of String Builder. So it's sometimes nice to go out and look at that documentation just to kind of get an idea of what it's for. So assuming that we've got all the input from the user, now it's time to uh, process the story components. That's our next section.
my story dot append. And what we're appending on is the, the first part of our story. So for me, it's the Ewoks. My the little and then a space, and then a semicolon. So that's the first part of my story. Now I'm up to my first blank, you know, of the fill in the blank thing. So then you say my story dot append. And this is where you put in your variable. For me, it's the adjective one. We might just to save some time uh, append in the uh, the punctuation. Now some of our Mad Libs have paragraphs in them, and the problem is it's hard to put a paragraph in uh, text, and you really don't have a lot of control at this point. You can't just say enter because if you want to say a paragraph right here, you hit enter, and it does that, and that's not what you want. You want to actually put a paragraph in the output, not the input. That was interesting how it automatically added the plus sign. Okay. Another thing you might run into is double quotes. If you have embedded double quotes, that may be problematic. I'll go over that in a bit. And now we do the next part of the story. So here. And this will follow the same pattern. First you append in the stuff that doesn't change. Here's my new sentence. So I say, how did these furry So as I'm building up my story, you know, I'm just alternating between literal strings, which are surrounded by double quotes, and the variables that we collected earlier. So here we're just stitching together our story, swapping back and forth between the two. Now suppose I uh, wanted to put in a uh, new line in the text that comes out. Uh, what you can do is embed an escape sequence, so backslash n. 
and that will start a new line for you. So the next thing will ha actually happen on the next line, not just paste it onto the screen. So when you see your story kind of going off the string, screen, you might want to put a backslash n somewhere in the quotes, some, somewhere here. If the text you're typing in has quotes in it, that kind of messes this up because if there's a quote in the middle, say here, if you, for some reason, you'd have quotes around defeat, you can't do that because the compiler's all confused. It doesn't know that you don't want to end the string right there. You actually want to put a quote there. So the way you do that is to put a backslash quote. See if that works. Yeah. So that tells the compiler, no, I'm not trying to stop the string. I'm, I'm just putting quotes in my embedded text. So if you have that situation, uh, use the backslash quote escape sequence. Other special characters like um, a backslash character or say you want a tab, you would embed those in strings uh, where you need them. Say these are all the parts of speech of my story. Now I want to show the story to the user. Here you would say system.out.println my story. So now your story is all built up dot to string. And that will take the story and spit out the string that's inside it. Let's see how that looks. Again, there's the, the text. So I put in my funny words and hit enter. And then you see it prints out the story. The UX might be little, but they're also slimy. The slimy misspelled probably. How did these furry shoes help defeat the Disney empire? You know, so again, uh, it's substituting in the words that the user put in into the story that you have in front of you here. Okay. So now we have all three parts. We've got the input. So here's the input part. Here's the processing part where we're building up the story. And then finally our output is here. And then you have your, your story down here. Okay? So that's the plan on Mad Libs.